Hello, this is Heshi Kantankowitz coming to you from the Hebrew Home for the Aged, New York's premier assisted living facility for Jews before they die. Today, I want to talk to you about the Bible and mail-in voting. Way back in ancient Hebrew times, there was an up-and-comer, David, who was in a tight race to become the next king of Israel. It's true he was a lowly shepherd, but he had big name recognition because he had slain Goliath. Scholars today think that may have been overhyped because slingshot fighting back then was a lot like our professional wrestling. I'm not saying Goliath threw the fight, but let's face it, a little pitcher against a giant like that? Goliath threw the fight. Anyway, the future king of Israel, David, was running against the city councilman from Bethlehem, Murray. Murray made his money in real estate. He claimed to be a billionaire, but nobody could prove that then because the counting system didn't go that high yet. Also, he had run afoul of the law by selling dead sea salts that turned out to be really Epsom. Now, just before the election, a great sickness spread throughout the land. I'm talking about gout. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, did everyone's feet hurt. They prayed and prayed to God for relief because at that point they still hadn't realized that he's indifferent to human suffering. And what did it mean that everyone had gout? Nobody could walk to the polls on election day. It would have to be done by mail-in ballot. Finally, the big day came. And wouldn't you know, it was a tie. The whole country was plunged into uncertainty and chaos. Even the prophets couldn't predict what would happen. But wait a minute. Mail was always a bit slow coming through the Judean mountains. When the final mail carrier arrived, he carried one last ballot. It was anonymous, though scholars know now it was cast by one Edith Finkelbaum from Hebron. Then another problem. Edith had punched the hole in the scroll next to David's name, but it didn't go through. There was a little piece of papyrus hanging off. They called that a hanging chad. In America, they changed it to Chad, so it would sound like it was named for a Gentile. Hanging Chad. They don't teach you that in Hebrew school, do they? Luckily, the ancient Hebrews had very enlightened courts. This was before they started letting sexual predators serve as justices. It was decided for David! Israel was saved so the Jews could go on in history to be relentlessly oppressed and persecuted. Why am I telling you this? Vote by mail! It's safe! It's easy! It matters! You still here? Go vote already! This has been Heshi Kentenkowitz from the Hebrew home for the aged, where if the virus doesn't kill you, the food will. I'm back. My grandson Asher saw that video and right away he calls me and tells me nobody his age knows what mail is and I have to explain how to do it. His generation and their verstunkene devices. Apparently, sending each other those little smiley faces counts as meaningful correspondence. <sighs> okay, fine. First, you fill in your ballot for whoever it is you want to vote for. Now, in some states, you have to put the ballot in an inside envelope before you put that envelope in this envelope. And that's it. Now get out of here and vote. I'm back. Now my grandson Asher says I have to tell how to put the stamp on the envelope. My day I had to lick it. 
I always thought boys collected stamps to practice for when they got between a lady's legs later on. But apparently, no. They just enjoy collecting stamps. Like this. You stick it in the corner. Okay, Asher, that good for you? Ay vey, I gotta explain to you where the mailbox is too? It's blue and on the street corner. Look up from your phone. And that really is it. Sei gesund. Live well and be healthy. And vote! And do it as soon as possible!